Why is Trump running for the 2024 presidential elections? If he believes the 2020 elections were stolen? If the system was supposedly compromised then? What makes him think he'll get a fair deal in 2024? He'll win even more bigly. So bigly that even Sleepy Joe can't make up votes. Because that's how cheating works. He's stupid and doesn't pay attention to anything he says. Probably because he doesn't actually believe it. Doesn't matter if he gets a fair deal in 2024. We'll be ready this time. Playing a rigged game seems to be his forte. Because he was lying to grift people he still is. Delusion. Deep down he knows it wasn't stolen he just wanted to get his cult following to believe it was. Inciting his fellowship to do a second Jan. 6. And of course. Getting money from the whole pack thing. Same reasons Democrats ran in 2020 after claiming that the Russians hacked the 2016 election. You generate money by running. The more you appear on TV. The more states you go to. The more cash you get. Whether you win or not only matters to historians. You already made the money. He doesn't believe the 2020 election was stolen, it's his grift. Everything he does is about milking money out of his dwindling base. And pushing back on the legal system that is catching up with him on multiple fronts. One thing they won't get away with on 2024 is disallowing partisan observers access. Also there are people, in compromised jurisdictions, who are attempting to clean up the invalid ballots. Men, what are things you want to be asked when a woman is getting to know you? The usual stuff. What is on your bucket list? Where do you see yourself in 10, 20 years and beyond? Do you want to have a family? Have ever been cheated on? What did you take away from that experience? What are you looking for in a relationship? What are your values? In a relationship what is a deal breaker for you and why? What are your boundaries in a relationship? What are your views on politics? Religion and roles of men and women in a relationship? What is your opinion on marriage? How do you know you found the right person for you? What is your relationship with your parents? It would be easier to list the things I don't want to ask like, is, your real name? Do you really work at? Because I call them and they say they never heard of you. How come we never go over to your place? Why isn't your car at the address you told where you live? How come your FB is so empty? Did you bang my mom? Did you bang my nana? Did you bang my sister? Is that a burner phone? Ask my name. You know. Just like you would any person. It's the polite thing to do. Why do this? Because it makes things awkward and when women make things awkward they never admit their responsibility. Instead they call a man a creep when in reality she's the one who broke the social conventional and treated him as less than from the start. It's okay to not be attracted to a guy but you can achieve a no thanks without treating him as less than human. Do you like your job? What are some of your favorite movies? Why? Describe your dream home. What are some of the features? What were you like as a child? As a teenager? College student? What are some social issues or cultural phenomena you've changed your attitude or perspective on and why? How large is your penis? According to volumetric displacement? What can you cook? Serious, people who are happy with life. What advice would you give to people who are trying to be happy too? Very good advice from all others. I would like to add. Cut out as many news sources as you can. The less the better. Become an observer. Meditating, as others have mentioned, is a fantastic practice but if you cannot persevere with it just play a game with yourself where you don't really care what happens. You are just a curious bystander. Observe in particular what happens inside you. Specifically how things make you feel. No judgment. Just observing. The best practice is gratitude. That is the one that with time will make you happier. Recognize and acknowledge things that you feel grateful for. Do it first thing in the morning right after waking up if possible. If not then as soon as you have a moment to yourself. Give yourself purpose. In striving to achieve your purpose you'll find happiness. Your greatest purpose is born from your core values. Be kind to everyone. Most of all yourself. Empathy is a learned skill. Practice it. Surround yourself with interesting people. Learn to communicate both love and respect. The ways in which people receive and understand them vary. But they are integral to building lasting relationships. Take action to improve yourself continuously. Seek to understand. Not to be right. Never repeat a mistake if you can help it. Plan carefully for your future. But intentionally exist only in your present. Accept that one day you will inevitably die. Don't rush. My friend wants me to do the heavy lifting to coordinate a social life and introduce her to new friends. Is she asking for too much? Not your job. If you want to do a good deed then help her meet some people or just include her sometimes. It's embarrassing to have to ask for help and must have taken some courage to even ask you. That definitely sounds like too much to ask of you. It doesn't seem fair that your friend isn't willing to contribute ideas or show flexibility. But expects you to do all the work. Rather than trying to coordinate a social life for her. Maybe you can suggest some activities that you both can do together. So that she can take more of an active role in developing her own social life. It's also okay to let her know that you don't feel comfortable doing all the work for something that involves both of you. Good luck and let us know how it goes. Just a thought as you haven't given much detail but could your friend be autistic? Struggle socializing not flexible and if she's asking you to help organize this maybe struggles with communication slash starting new things? If you think this could be the case then it would be really nice if you could help her. Autism can be extremely lonely. Again I'm just hypothesizing but if she's truly a friend and the above is the case perhaps you could give her a hand? Depends. 
My experience would tell me that if someone got to a point that they actually asked a friend for help with improving their social life, that they are likely feeling lonely and possibly depressed. It may have taken a lot of courage to actually ask this question. And if it was me, I would want to help them. You are not responsible for someone else's social life. This is too much to ask of you and you should tell your friend that. If she wants to make friends and have any social life she has to do the majority of the work. Sure, she can tag along when you go out occasionally. But that's all you can and should really do. Finding friends and sustaining friendships is all on her.